today we will study about laplace transform so before start uh, before starting to study this laplace transform we was uh, we should first note so before studying this laplace transform we should first know that what is a integral transform so what is integral transform a transform what is what does a transform do transform converts one function to another function through some transform right so if you have some function here say f of t that would be converted to some function here say f of s and this function would be transformed by this say integral transform so integral transform what does it do it uh, performs the integration of the given function f of t with respect to some other function so integral transform is it is denoted by i of s and it is nothing but the integration over the specified limits a to b of the given function so this is what this was the function that was given to us f of t and this is nothing but this is equal to uh, this integral transform that is equal to integration of this function f of t multiplied by some other function k of f uh, k of s and t dt where what is this k this is known as the kernel for the given transformation and it depends upon two factors one is this s and one is this t so what is this s s is the uh, variable of this domain so this is the s domain and this is the t domain so this kernel links both the s domain as well as the t domain so depending upon this type of kernel we have various transformations for example we have studied about the fourier transform so in fourier transform our kernel is of this kind e to the power i s t so the fourier transform of the function is defined like this f of s or f of omega whatever you would like to call it integration from minus infinity to infinity of the given function f of t and in, in place of this kernel k s t it is e to the power iota s t d t so this is the transform that we have studied the fourier transform if you take your kernel to be e to the power iota s t if you take your kernel k of s t to be sin s t or cos s t so in this case we would have integration from minus infinity to infinity f of t either you would have here sin s t dt or you would have cos s t dt so this now becomes fourier spine transform and if you take integration minus infinity to infinity of the given function cos s t dt so this becomes cosine fourier cosine transform this is also depending upon the different values of kernel what kind of integral transform do you have now if we take the kernel to be e to the power minus st so in that case and we limit take the limit uh, of this a varies from 0 to infinity so that means we have integration varies from 0 to infinity the given function f of t multiplied by e to the power minus st dt so this this integral now is known as the laplace transform so what does laplace transform do it converts your t domain so this is the t domain it converts the t domain to the corresponding s domain by the operator l this l represents the laplace transform of operator laplace transform operator so it converts some function f of t to another function f of s right and the formula for this is uh, the operator l applied on the given function f of t results in capital f of s so whichever function f is given to you we will write the corresponding capital letter over here capital f of s and by definition this is equal to integration from 0 to infinity f of t e to the power minus st dt now instead of this kernel we have e to the power minus st where uh, so this is the definition for laplace transform so next can we find the laplace transform of some constant function so the function f of t that is given to be k so now can we find its laplace transform so for that 
we will find the Laplace transform of this f of t that is the integration from 0 to infinity of the given function that is k or by, uh, we will first write the definition f of t e to the power minus s t dt so it now becomes integration 0 to infinity k into e to the power minus s t dt so now k is constant it will come out of integration so we have integration from 0 to infinity e to the power minus s t dt and when you perform this integration so you would have e to the power minus s t because the integration here is with respect to t so we would have minus s here and the limits varies from 0 to infinity so we would have minus k upon s as such and then when you substitute the limits so we would have limit some b going to infinity e to the power minus s b this is the upper limit because we do not directly substitute infinity here because this will result in an improper integral so the value here would not be directly defined so then we have the lower limit so minus of this quantity e to the power minus s and the value of t is 0 so it, it is what what is this quantity so if you see what is this quantity when you substitute infinity here so you would have e to the power minus infinity kind thing and it could be written as 1 upon e to the power infinity so it would be 1 by infinity so this would be 0 so this by calculation this would be minus k upon s and this term would be 0 and then we have minus of e to the power 0 what is e to the power 0 e to the power anything that is equal to 1 so the final answer is this minus and minus it becomes plus so the final answer is k upon s so we obtain from here that the Laplace transform of some constant function this is k divided by s so this formula we should note that the Laplace function the Laplace transform of any constant function k that is nothing but k by s that is nothing but k by s so next we have so is it possible to compute the Laplace transform of any given function the answer to this is no we cannot always find the Laplace transform of any given function in fact we can only calculate the Laplace transform whenever the function satisfies these following properties so the property says that we have a sufficient condition for Laplace transform to exist so what does this sufficient condition say sufficient conditions means if you have these properties so then your Laplace transform would exist but the converse won't be true that means if you say uh, these properties are not available then you cannot conclude that the given function uh, Laplace transform exists so for that that is the meaning for sufficient condition so all right what are the conditions that are required for a function so that its Laplace transform exists so the first condition is that the function should be piecewise continuous on zero on the open interval 0 to infinity and second condition is that it should be of exponential order so what does this mean for a function to be piecewise continuous on 0 to infinity it means that we will see that in a moment so what does this result say this result says that if you have all these two conditions that means your function is piecewise continuous as well as of exponential order then you can say the Laplace transform of the given function exists so this is the condition for existence of Laplace transform so now what do you mean by this piecewise continuity and what do you mean by this exponential order so we will first understand these two terms to understand this piecewise continuity we say that a function is piecewise continuous if it contains at most finite number of discontinuities that means the number of discontinuities which, which are present in the given function they are finite in number and these discontinuities are of jump type discontinuities so what does this mean jump type discontinuities so it means the value of function at the point of discontinuity that is not equal so mathematically we say if we are talking about the discontinuity at the point x is equal to c so we have some point c here on this real line 
so that means your function would have some value here and some value here so that means it is continuous everywhere here also and here also right but at this particular point at the point c the value of function is not sent here it is from the left it has value this one from the right it has value this one so we say that the left hand limit of the given function f of t at the point c negative is a which is a finite number and at the right limit that is p which is also finite number but these two numbers they are not equal to themselves so that is the condition for jump discontinuity so uh, we i will try to explain this through an example suppose we have this function f of t which is defined like t square where t varies from 0 to 1 t square plus 1 where t is greater than equal to 1 so now this function this is not continuous function in all this domain 0 to 1 because let me first see, uh, show you the graph of this function in the interval from 0 to 1 in the interval from 0 to 1 the function has value t square so it, it is something like this so this is the given function so at 1 the value is 1 at 0 the value is 0 because the function is f of t that is equal to t square right and so this is the t domain uh, this axis is the t axis and this axis is the f of the axis so here in this interval 0 to 1 its value is this one in the uh, interval where t is greater than or equal to 1 the value is t square plus 1 so when you substitute f of t which is given to be t square plus 1 when you substitute t is equal to 1 we would have the value as 2 when you substitute 2 is equal to 2 we would have 2 square plus 1 that is 5 and so on so you see at this point Uh, at one we have the value as two. At the point two we have this value as five. So here this will be five. This will be three, four, and then we have five. So we can join these points. It would be a uh, this square curve. So it would be uh, more sharp like this curve, right? So now you see this is not continuous in this whole domain from zero to two. If we talk about zero to two, the firstly the curve is like this, and then you have you would have to pick up your pen to reach here at this point to reach from this point to this point and then you will continuously draw this segment so the uh, curve that is not continuous this is not continuous moreover it is not differentiable because for differentiability we need continuity and in the whole domain it is not differentiable but it is integrable that means we have a finite this jump discontinuity present for this function so what is this uh, jump discontinuity present at at t is equal to 1 we say we have jump discontinuity so we only have one discontinuity present in whole of the domain so we say this chip, uh, jump discontinuity that is finite in nature so that is the meaning for piece wise continuous function defined in this case from the interval 0 to 1 so this was the case for this piece wise continuity so next let us understand what is this exponential order so a function is said to be of exponential order if the given function f of t is less than equal to e to the power alpha t into m so this is the given function the function is said to be of exponential order if this condition is satisfied so that means we are saying the modulus the maximum value of the function is less than equal to this exponential value so where what is this alpha and what is this m they are the constants these are constants and whenever t is large for that case this condition should hold So that means if we are to check the exponential order for some particular function, what we are required to check, we will check it for limit tending to t tending to infinity. So we will check the function's value f of t e to the power alpha t. Both of them they should tend to zero. If that is the case, we say it is of exponential order. Otherwise not. So let us have a look, quick look at the examples. Say the function is t to the power n. so now this 
where n is greater than 0 so now this is of exponential order how because you can write your function tn what uh, as this uh, tn less than this particular function because here instead of this tn term we are having infinite terms which are being added to it so that means the overall effect is that this t to the power n is less than this whole quantity and if you remember what is this this is e to the power t so here we have the modulus of t to the power n less than e to the power t so we are here we have the value of alpha is 1 the value of m as 1 also so this is an exponential order function so the next example is that of sin t the given function is sin t now this function is also of exponential order because we know it is a bounded function and its bound is 1 so we can write it to be 1 into e to the power 0 t so we have m as 1 alpha as 0 so this is the function which is also of exponential order but note that the function e to the power t square and the another function 1 by t square they are not of exponential order how we can check it through this condition that whenever limit t tends to infinity you have the modulus of the given function multiplied by e to the power alpha t so now when you substitute t is equal to infinity here you would have e to the power infinity that is eventually infinity and in the denominator also you would have infinity square that is infinity so you have infinity by infinity form so basically we will apply l hopetels rule what does it say it says that whenever you have some indeterminate form present in the form of limits in that case you will differentiate the numerator separately so when you differentiate it you will have alpha e to the power alpha t and you will differentiate the denominator separately so the derivative of t square would be 2t and we won't operate the product uh, quotient rule to calculate the derivatives so, so derivatives are simply obtained by taking the derivative of this numerator and this denominator so now when you substitute t is equal to infinity here we would have again e to the power infinity that is infinity and when you substitute here t as infinity it is again infinity so again we'll apply this l hopetels rule it says that you will differentiate the numerator separately so when you differentiate this numerator we would have alpha square e to the power alpha t when you differentiate this denominator to t we would have only 2 so here when you substitute the limit t is equal to infinity now you would have in the numerator as infinity and the denominator you would have the value 2 so which, which which would be equivalent to infinity only right so this limit would tend to infinity so we say that the given function that is not of exponential order right so this is all about this uh, piece wise continuity and exponential order so here the condition uh, for this piece wise continuity and uh, that of exponential order is only the sufficient condition as i have told you moreover if there is some function which does not satisfy this condition there could also be a function which would have the laplace transform but would but is not capable to uh, satisfy this property either of piece wise continuity or of exponential order so we have an example for that particular function the example says that a function is f of t is equal to so our function is f of t is equal to t to the power by 3 so this is one such example for which these properties are not satisfied but the given laplace transform exists so this is all about the existence of laplace transform and an introduction to laplace transform